I'm Paul Raffer, and I'm a neurologist, a physician, and practiced until I became ill. My first symptoms were a very common manifestation of a lot of things called a rash. It took a while for that to be diagnosed correctly. I have a very good friend who recommended a very good dermatopathologist and dermatologist. And he looked at it and he said he'd have the biopsy back in about a week. And he called me and he said, you have mycosis fungoides. I would recommend that you go to Stanford and be seen by Dr. Kim, who, if not one of the world's experts, is certainly the West Coast guru for what you have. Paul Raffer has mycosis fungoides and Cesare syndrome, which is a leukemic involvement of the skin as well. So it's a variant of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. Dr. Kim and her team saw me and they said, you have Cesare syndrome and that makes you automatically stage four. Stage four of anything is basically a fatal prognosis. I felt very much like this might be the end of my life. But I figured if anyone was going to be able to figure out the way to treat this, it would be the team here. Unfortunately, he failed the milder treatments, and then he had to move on to some more cytotoxic regimens. They said, well, we think that stem cell transplant is what's next for you. But you had to have a Cesare count, which is the count of the number of malignant cells in your blood, of under 2,000. And mine were well above that level. Allergen transplant is a very complex process because we have to destroy the host blood system and have the donor to reconstitute the whole system. And during this process, patient has risk to have infections and also graft versus host disease. So I started in chemotherapy and it got the leukemia count down to a level that I could start the transplant protocol. Now the first leg of the transplant protocol involves radiation of the skin and things went very badly. Fever, culture's negative. I came back at the end of the fourth week and they got the blood count back and the Cesare count was way high. And they said, we have to cancel the stem cell transplant. I remember that's right before Thanksgiving and we were in the room with him and his wife and we were all crying, you know, because we say, you know, we can't move forward. And at that time, we're not quite sure he won't ever make it. Dr. Kim came back in the room after everybody had left and sat down. And she said, I'm with you here. We're going to fight this. You're strong. And I believed her. After he failed a lot of treatments, finally a drug called Deniloquin Diftitox cleared his blood. And then we added the total skin radiation, which is a unique radiation that we have at Stanford, where you can treat the entire skin surface so that put him in, in a stable remission so that when we gave him the transplant, it stayed clear. It's lasting almost three years now. Good to see you. He has no disease, so we're very happy. One thing I learned is never give up. Every patient is different, and we always see individualized medicine. That's what we do here. I just had a very good feeling that this was going to work because Dr. Kim had that about her. She was always very optimistic. Every time we see him, we get very teary because we knew that he definitely would not be here today without the transplant. We're just so happy for him. He's regained his life.